Today I'm going to be talking about a current problem that I have in the macro shorelines. It's a common pest that we all know and we all hate in this saltwater aquarium keeping hobby. Red planaria flatworms. Today I'm going to be talking about ways you can fix this issue yourself in your home aquarium and also the ways I'm going to be utilizing to try and fix this issue in the macro shorelines. Let's get into it. What's going on reefers? Welcome back to another episode on the channel. My name's Blaine. This is the King Tide Corals channel. If you guys are tuning in, I want to say thanks for stopping by, checking out the video, and checking out the channel. Sorry I wasn't able to get a video up last Sunday. It's been a really crazy work week. I work in salvage operations on sunken vessels and derelict vessels around the Pacific Northwest area, and also I travel across the country if need be, but Currently, we've had a lot of sinking vessels locally, and it's kept me really busy. So I'm going to post a couple pictures here on the screen. You guys can see what I've been dealing with. But overall, work kind of took over the past couple weeks, and I wasn't able to get a video out last Sunday, so I apologize for that. Hopefully this week will make up for it, and I'm going to be going over a common pest that we deal with in our aquariums, and I'm excited to share with you guys what I'm doing to combat this problem, and also other ways you guys can utilize in your home aquariums to try to get rid of red planaria flatworms. Let's go ahead and get into it, and I'm excited to show you guys what we're doing. Now before we go over ways we can combat these pests, let's get to know them a little bit better. Red planaria flatworms are a type of common aquarium pest that don't get much bigger than a couple millimeters in size. Color wise, they're an orange hue, maybe reddish, and sometimes rustic brown. These are a very small type of flatworm, and in reality, they don't do any damage directly to your corals or to your fish. But the biggest problem that they have is that they can mass produce. Basically, they're able to reproduce so quickly that what they can do is they can cover your entire coral and your coral will have issues like localized bleaching and it won't be able to receive the right amount of light. These flatworms like to dine on microalgae, copepods, and also they have photosynthetic abilities. These flatworms can become a huge issue in our home aquarium. And if they're not combated right off the get-go, they can become a huge problem because of their ability to reproduce so quickly. Now that we know a little bit more about red planaria flatworms, let's go ahead and dive into some of the ways you guys can combat these little pests in your tank. The first category is manual removal. There's a couple different ways to do this, but one way is gonna need some elbow grease and a little bit of common sense. First thing you can do is dip your corals before they enter the tank. Anytime you dip something, you have the opportunity to remove any bad hitchhikers. Now you may not get rid of everything, but it's a start and it's a really good start to say the least. I always dip anything that goes in before it goes into the tank and I usually take it out a couple days later and dip again. Another manual removal technique is utilizing a hose, like a water change hose, and as you do a water change, or you can just remove water from your display and put it into your sump afterwards, is you have a mesh bag at the bottom of the pipe or the tube. I'm gonna show a picture here right here of what you can do, and basically what you're doing is you're collecting the flatworms as you suck them out of the display. You can just suck them off the glass, the rock work, and basically what you're doing is removing them from the system and collecting them in the mesh bag so that they're not getting put back into the water. And then you can replace the water back into your system. The second method of dealing with red planaria flatworms is natural predators. This is a great way for your system because you're going it the natural way. I really like this way because I always think it's fun to add something new to the system. Of course, as long as it fits your system and it's going to work out in the long run. I think it's a really great idea too to be able to see something actually going actively after these flatworms and seeing it happen before your eyes. There's a bunch of different natural predators of these red planaria flatworms, but I'm going to give you guys a couple examples. There's a bunch of different wrasses that really enjoy them, such as the six line wrasse or a leopard wrasse. I've seen different things online about dragonets or blinis going after them, such as scooter blinis, red, ruby red dragonets, or even target mandarins. Of course, that isn't confirmed, but I think it's a great way to add something very cool to your system and still be able to maybe combat a problem. The one thing though that I know that eats flatworms is the blue velvet nudibranch. This is why I'm gonna add one of those to my system, and I think it's gonna be a really interesting invert to watch and follow along with as it's going after all of these flatworms. 
One thing to remember with the Blue Velvet Nudibranch is that it only eats flatworms, so you need to be able to move it on to another system with flatworms, or be able to find a way to supplement feeding for it. For the third and final treatment method of red planaria flatworms, it comes down to chemical treatment. This is something that I'm not going to offer to you guys, and it's something I'm not going to utilize as well. I, of course, have seen rave reviews online on being able to deal with these planaria flatworms with chemicals, but it's something that I don't like doing. I like utilizing as many natural ways to get rid of problems before I turn to chemicals. Of course, it's something I want to bring up in this video, and it's something that I've seen very successful in the past. This product that is used is by Salifer, and it's called Flatworm Exit. I'm not going to use it here in this trials when I'm dealing with these flatworms because I'm going to go for the more natural method, but I wanted to be able to share this with you guys so you guys can check it out just in case if you have a problem that's continued and everything else hasn't worked out. So those are the three methods that I've seen online and throughout all my research when dealing with red planaria flatworms. Flashback. What's going on reefers? I'm in the car now getting ready to head to one of my local fish stores. They're called Saltwater City up in Bellevue. Really cool shop and they've been able to source something for me that I've been looking for to help me out with one of my problems in the macro shorelines tank. So I'm really excited to head over there, check out what they got in stock and then pick up what I've been looking for for a little bit of time here. So let's go ahead head over to Saltwater City now. So we're all set at Saltwater City. Big shout out to them again. I walked in hoping to just get one thing, but of course, anytime you go to a local fish store or any fish store in general, you leave with more than what you were bargaining for. I'm really excited. I ended up grabbing a really small fish to add to the macro shorelines tank as well. And also one little killer that I'm gonna be adding to the tank to hopefully help out with a little flatworm problem that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead, head home, show you guys what I got, get them acclimated to the tank, and then go ahead and put them in. 15 minutes later. So I'm back from the local fish store and I ran in to grab something to help me out with a little issue I've had in the macro shorelines tank. So currently I'm dealing with a little bit of red planaria flatworm issue. So they're just a little small flatworm species. They're not super harmful to anything in the tank, but they can reproduce really fast and just overall I don't want them in the system. And I did not want to go with a chemical treatment like flatworm exit because I didn't want to risk killing any inverts in the tank like pistol pea, all my pod population, and any other micro inverts that came in on the KP Aquatics rock. So what I decided to do was go with a more natural way of eradicating these flatworms. And I ran into my local fish store that ended up sourcing one for me and they grabbed me a blue velvet nudibranch. It's a really cool species of nudibranch that's really cool and gorgeous looking, but what they do is they feed directly and primarily off of flatworms. So it's gonna be used in this tank here to eradicate my flatworm issue. I'm not gonna be keeping it in the tank forever because obviously it's gonna run out of food supply. So what I'm gonna be doing is kind of passing it around to other local hobbyists in the area that have flatworm issues and I'm gonna go ahead and give it to them so that way they can help out with their problems as well and this thing can kind of keep living a happy life in all kinds of different systems and eat its heart out on flatworms. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I grabbed also too. I snagged a small fish for the tank as well. I have not seen the flaming prawn goby since I've added it only one time and I'm getting a little concerned that maybe something had happened, but I'm deciding to add another little fish to the tank to add a little bit more life. And I think it's gonna be good for the macros because I can kind of lessen up on the nitrates that I'm adding to the tank dosing wise. And it'll just be good for overall for the system. So let's go ahead and check out what I grabbed. Here's the macro shorelines tank. Everything's looking really good. I'm really excited about this tank as a whole. I think the system in general looks really good and it's a fun new style of reefing. As for what I ended up grabbing, there's a couple things I snagged. So the first thing is I grabbed this little baby scooter blini. It's a really cute fish. I'm really excited to add it to the tank. It's gonna add a little bit more movement to the system. I don't think it's gonna be hiding nearly as much as the flaming prawn goby. I've yet to really see it that much. I'm hoping everything's going all right with the goby. But for now, I think this is gonna be a fun little fish to add. I have a really big pod population within this tank, so this guy will definitely be happy to snack away throughout the time it's in the tank. 
And then as I went for the local fish store, this is what I went for in the first place, and it's a blue velvet nudibranch. It's a really cool species of nudibranch. It's a really gorgeous one as well. And I think it's gonna be great to be able to kind of combat all of the issues that I've had with flatworms here in this system. There's not a lot of them, but I do have a couple friends that have issues with flatworms in their tank. So it's gonna be nice to be able to pass it around to other hobbyists in the area and help them out with their flatworm issue. Now let's go ahead and get these guys acclimated. I'm gonna test the salinity in both the bags from the store. One of them came directly from the supplier. So we'll check to see if the salinity is at the right level. If it is, I'm gonna go ahead and add it directly to the tank. And then if it's not, I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting everything drip acclimated. So after using my refractometer here, I ended up checking both the salinity of the importer's water and also the fish store's water. The fish store water matches the same salinity level that I have in my system. It's right in between 1.025 and 1.026. So the scooter blini just needs to get up to temperature and then I can add it to the system. As for the importer's water with the blue velvet nudibranch, it's sitting at 1.023. It's a lot lower than what my system is now. So I'm gonna be doing an extensive drip acclimation for this nudibranch because it's also really hard to get them acclimated to new systems. I wanna make sure I do this right so that I add it and nothing bad ends up happening to this new invert for the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the drip line acclimator all set and ready to go for the nudibranch. And then I'm going to let the scooter blini get up to temperature, add that to the tank, and then probably give this a good hour, maybe hour and a half of drip acclimation to get that up to the right salinity level. Like I said, we're back in between the acclimation of the nudibranch and the temperature of the scooter blini's bag is all up to par. So we're going to go ahead and scoop them out and get them into the system. So let's go ahead and work on doing that. Give me one second. A few moments later. All right, got the handy dandy measuring cup, got the blini inside there. I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting this guy now into the tank. Welcome to your new home, buddy. Two hours later. All right, the blue velvet nudibranch is all set to put into the tank. I have it acclimated up to the salinity of the macro shorelines. We'll go ahead and work on getting it into this little tablespoon. Now we'll go ahead and get it into the macro shorelines tank. I'm going to try and send it down there. All right, it's all in the tank now the Bellini, the Nudibranch and it looks like it's off to the hunt. I'm really excited to add this to the tank. It's a really cool natural way of trying to combat flatworms. So I'm really excited to be able to share this experience all with you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a day or two to let these both settle in and then I'll pick up the camera and get back with you guys. So let's go ahead and give these guys a couple days to acclimate and then we'll check it out. Several days later. All right, Reefers, it's been about three or four days since I've added the Blue Velvet Nudibranch and the Scooter Blini, and I think overall, things have definitely changed in the system. I used to see quite a bit of the Red Planaria flatworms here on the front glass, and I'm seeing a lot less. I don't know if that has to do with what I've added to the tank, but I've been doing a lot of manual removal, and also I think the Blue Velvet Nudibranch has been hard at work. You guys can see him now. He's hanging out right here in some of the macro but he's really kind of moving around pretty quick and it seems like he's definitely finding some things to eat. I'm really excited about this addition and it's a really cool invert to kind of follow along with throughout the day. Overall, really excited about this new addition and this new challenge of Red Planaria Flatworms and to be able to share it with you guys. Hope you guys are able to kind of gain something from this process. Now I want to let you know Nudibranchs aren't the easiest to keep and I don't want anyone just going out and grabbing them because they have the ability of releasing toxins if they don't do well in the system. Now, especially with such a smaller system, it would be really bad for it to release toxins, but in bigger systems, it's not terrible, but I just want to let you guys know it's something to remember and something to keep your eyes out on. He is quite the mover though. You guys can see him now. He is up on the light fixture and he is moving and grooving, looking for more flatworms to munch on. Overall though, 
think the macro shorelines is looking really good. I have the idea of adding maybe one, maybe two more species of macros, and then I'm just kind of letting go on cruise control and just let what see this tank does. Overall though, I've been seeing some pretty cool and interesting new things in the system. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I'm gonna put an arrow to it, but there's a small pencil urchin that's been hanging out in this tank. And I think I finally figured out what's been munching on some of the Calerpa, but I'm trying to figure out whether or not I wanna ditch him or keep him in the tank. He's really cute and I'd feel bad for getting rid of him. But of course I cannot put him into my reef because sometimes he can agitate corals. Overall though, really excited to see what's gonna happen with the system and I think everything's gonna go pretty smoothly. Glad I didn't go the chemical route and I think overall the tank's really happy. Well that's it for this week's video guys. I think it's really important to share with you all the ups and the downs of this hobby. Of course having pests in your tank is never fun but the outbreak isn't too bad right now and I think it's great that I'm able to jump on it early. The blue velvet nudibranch is going to be really fun to see what he does throughout the next couple weeks and I think honestly I'll be passing him on pretty soon. It seems like the planaria flatworms have actually bumped back in size here in the past couple nights that he's been working in the tank. Also maybe the scooter blaney's eating him as well, it's hard to tell right now. Of course I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video, it was really fun sharing everything with you guys. If you haven't done so already, be sure to smash the subscribe button and join on my reefing journey. Until next week, happy reefing.